What is up guys, Jarv here, back today jumping into Destiny 2. Now in today's video we're taking a look at the Salvation's Grip. This is a brand new exotic grenade launcher becoming available as part of Beyond Light. So if you want to find out how you can get your hands on it, the first stasis weapon inside Destiny 2, then be sure to stick around and enjoy the video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a rating down below, that super helps me out here on the channel. And if you're new here, I want to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 content, be sure to hit subscribe as well. But without further delay guys, let's jump into the video. Now today it's in the launch of Beyond Light, a brand new expansion for Destiny 2. It's been a long wait, but one that is finally in our hands. And in this video today, we're taking a look at the Salvation's Grip. Now this weapon comes with the intrinsic trait Cryo Cannon, where you can hold fire to charge and release the fire. And this weapon's projectiles create stasis crystals and freeze nearby targets. It also has the legendary trait Flash Freeze. And by charging this weapon, this increases the freeze radius and the amount of stasis crystals created too. So as you guys can see, a very awesome ornate weapon and a very unique one in that at the moment at least it's the only stasis weapon that's been obtained inside destiny 2 but with that being said how do you get your hands on it but first things first you'll need to complete the main campaign for beyond light itself at the very end of the campaign you'll be asked to speak to zavala over in the tower and in doing so there's also a node over at the drifter so if you go visit him over in the annex he will have the stasis prototype quest waiting for you this is the very first step of the salvation script exotic quest now for this stage of the quest you'll need to collect Collect some intel and in doing so you'll need to defeat 10 servitors but also 10 fallen captains on Europa. Now the very best area that I found to complete both of these objectives is in Cadmus Ridge. You'll find this in the very north side of the map. You'll need to take a long trip on your sparrow to get there but there's also a lot of public events and also catch activity there which means there's a lot of fallen and your opportunities to defeat these two types of targets. Now defeats on these targets is not shared between members of your fire team so you'll need to make sure you all get hits on these targets in order for them to catch count but what we did find is that as long as you get hits on the target you are guaranteed a drop by defeating either a servitor or a fallen captain and once you've collected enough intel you'll unlock the next step of the quest and new to destiny 2 beyond light you now can see the full objective for the next step appear on screen now for the next step here we'll need to defeat one of eremis's council members in an empire hunt now in order to do this though we'll need to complete the reclaiming europa empire's fall and the dark priceless quest in order to do this now as well as this quest becoming available by completing the main campaign, Varix also has his own set of quests that have now become available so we'll need to visit him over in Sharon's Crossing to purchase the Empire Hunt quest to get these steps done. Now to complete the first step of the Empire Falls quest we'll first need to complete two sabotage quests. If you open this second menu you'll be able to select the two quests from tier 1 in order to complete the next step of the exotic quest. Now for the two sabotage quests that I picked up, we had to defeat combatants on Europa, which is very easy to do, but also the second quest by completing seven Varric's bounties. Now if you were like me, you were probably completing a lot of these in a run up till this point. However, this step is not retroactive, so if you have done that, you'll need to collect another seven bounties and complete this in order to finish the sabotage. This will bring you on to the next stage, which requires you to complete the aftermath mission. This is in the very north side of the map, and once you've completed this that will take you on to the next stage of the Varix quest and this is called the Dark Priestess. Now this one was quite a quick one to do and we need to collect 10 flecks of dark from fallen at Cadmus Ridge and learn about their fallen plans. Now precision final blows present a higher chance of finding them and they are random drops that drop from fallen enemies. You'll find them as little moat triangles on the ground that you'll need to pick up in order for them to count. Now once again fire team progress is not shared so you'll need to make sure that you get the final blows on these fallen in order to make them drop the flecks of darkness. However as the quest step states precision kills is most definitely the most optimal Way to do this. It's by far best to do this in the north side of the map as well, as the next step of the exotic quest requires us to defend the fleeing fallen skiff once again. Now, in order to do this successfully, you'll need to defeat some of the combatants around these fallen terminals. And once you've defeated as many ads as you possibly can that surround these, you'll be able to disengage the emitter. And once you've released all four emitters, this will release the catch and allow it to escape, and therefore completing this step of the quest. Now, doing this successfully will unlock access to the Dark Princess, and this is the Empire Hunt we'll need to complete. And the reward that we get here is called the Biting Winds. And this is a new legendary bow introduced with Beyond Light. And once you've successfully completed this mission, that will complete all the Varric section parts of this exotic quest. This will also update the Stasis Prototype exotic quest with the next stage for us to complete. Now this stage here is where we have to eliminate combatants with or affected by our Stasis abilities. Now by far the easiest way to do this is by utilizing public events. These have a rally flag that you can use which will give you all your abilities and your super. As well as this though, this is one of the only steps of the quest where fire team 
and progress can influence each other. As it states in the description, it can either be affected by or defeated by stasis. So if members of your fire team have encased enemies or combatants in stasis by defeating them, that will still count towards your stasis progress. Now, if for any reason you're not able to run as part of a fire team, then trying to double dip on public events is most definitely the best option here. The only difficulty though is that Europa only at the moment at least at this point has one deploy zone. But either way, public events is definitely the way to go for this step of the quest. And once you've defeated enough combatants with your stasis abilities, you'll now need to rendezvous with Spider's associate over in the Concealed Void Lost Sector. Now, if you're not too sure where this is, this is in Asterian Abyss in the middle of the map, and you'll find it located here by one of the regional chests. Now, what you want to do here is run the Lost Sector entirely as normal. Spider's Associate isn't accessible until after you complete the Lost Sector itself. So once you've defeated the boss and opened the chest, this will remove the barrier, giving you access to Spider's Associate. Now, once we've spoken to him, it will direct us back to the Drifter, and the Drifter will have for us a stasis containment device. So this is a modified weapon component to safely contain unstable forms of stasis. And we'll need to take this into an exclusive mission called Stealing Stasis. And this is the final mission, the Salvation Grip Exotic Quest. Now you find Stealing Stasis on the node over on Europa, and it's a very familiar room that you've probably seen a handful of times throughout the Beyond Light campaign. Now by hacking three terminals in the final room, this will gain access to the Salvation Grip Exotic Grenade Launcher. We'll pick it up from the middle of the room here, and we'll now need to escape before the facility self-destructs. Now on your way out, there are three brigs, but don't worry, there's plenty of heavy ammo, but also Spider's Associates to help you. But once taking them out, there'll be one final larger brig that we need to defeat in order to complete the mission. But but once successfully completed, we can return once again to the Drifter for a final piece of dialogue before completing the entire quest. So there we have it guys, each and every quest step for the Salvation's Grip Exotic Grenade Launcher new to Destiny 2 Beyond Light. Now as of making this video, this is currently the only stasis weapon inside Destiny 2. It's very unique in how it looks, but also how you use the weapon itself. But that's going to wrap up the video for today. I hope the hints and tips here are useful and save you a little bit of time in your mission to get in the Salvation's Grip. Now if you have enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a rating down below. That super helps me out here on the channel. And if you are new here, I want to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 content, especially throughout Beyond Light. And there'll be a lot of content throughout Beyond Light. We'll be covering it all here, right here on the channel. Then be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to jump back into the game as always, guys. But I will catch you all again very soon.